Hello everybody, my name is Mike Guy, and it's time for the second video in our Revamping Our Game series, where we are going to look at uh, modifying our comet uh, to use bitmaps and animation. Okay, before we begin, I want to show you the, the comet sprite sheet that we'll be using. I found this here on uh, this blog.makeyourflashgame.com. There's a whole bunch of these comet sheets that were made in Blender and then rendered to uh, uh, rendered to a sprite sheet. So I just grabbed the I think the first one here, and that's what we'll be using. Okay, I'm using the code from the previous video since we've gotten up through uh, using the the sprite for the ship and its custom animation. And we're just going to add the comet uh, features onto that. And you're going to see this, it's actually going to be a lot easier than the ship was because it's it's traditional animation. We're just going to have our common objects that are going to be automated. They're going to be looping through animation cycles, and that's that. So you're going to see that it's actually much easier to update the comets than it was to update the, the player due to how the animation was. So I'm going to come here to my init comet function, and I'm just going to add to it an Allegro bitmap. So we can associate a bitmap image with our comets, or with our comets plural. All right, great. So coming down here into the, the variable declaration section, I'm going to create a micro bitmap for my comet image, right like that. And then since I've created it there, I'm going to come all the way down to the bottom. And I'm going to do al destroy bitmap comet image. Great. OK. So we've got that all taken care of there. And I'm going to come back up here, and I'm simply going to load in the comet image that we're using. So comet image is going to equal al underscore load underscore bitmap. And the name of our bitmap is just asteroid hyphen one hyphen 96.png. I just pasted it there instead of typing there. All right, great. So that loads our, our comet for our asteroid into our code so that we can use it. Now you will notice that I don't need to do an AL convert uh, mask to alpha and I'll show you here. Let me pull up the file in question. The file in question is this here and it's a PNG so it's already transparent. Alright, so we don't need to worry about doing any AL uh, convert mask to alpha uh, because transparency is already baked right into the image. So all I have to do now is I just need to pass this new image into our init comments do that right here. I'll uh, pass in comment image. Great. And then I'm going to come down all the way down to my init comment function. Right there. And it's here that I'm going to initialize all our new image and animation uh, variables. So I'm going to do comments sub i dot max frame. Now this is going to seem a little, little high, but uh, uh, there's this actually provides for some very smooth, very cool looking animation. It's going to be 143. There are 143 frames of animation. And you're going to notice that 143 uh, frames of animation is going to make for some very smooth animation. So that's my max frame there. And then I'm going to do comments sub i dot current frame. Current frame is going to equal zero. And comments sub i dot frame count zero comments sub i dot frame delay is going to equal we want to do something relatively low here um, whoops that's not right uh, we want to do something relatively low here since we have so many frames of animation we want to cycle through those relatively quick um, so that you know we get the chance to, to see it and it'll look much smoother uh, so we're gonna try three I might actually dial that down to two we'll see how it looks when we run it and then I'm gonna do comments sub i Dot frame width and that's going to equal 96 and then we're going to do comets sub i dot frame height which will also equal 96 and then I'm going to do comets sub i dot animation columns And that's going to equal 21. There's 21 in this particular image. Uh, did I type something in wrong? Yeah. Missing an N on columns. Great. 
and then comments so I dot animation direction direction is going to equal one. Okay. And then last but not least, comments of i dot image equals image. The image that we read in here. Which we've got a modifier function to read in that image. Great. Alright, so that initializes our comet the way we want. I'm just gonna go ahead and uh, I'm not gonna run it, but I'm gonna build it, make sure I don't have any typos. Great. Okay, so really the only thing left to do now is to update the um, the update so that our animation works and to update our draw so we're now drawing the comet the way we want. You're going to notice with the way the comets are now as opposed to the circles that they were, these bounding boxes are very much inadequate. Uh, but we'll get there when we get there. So I'm going to come down here to my draw comet function and I'm going to take out this circle and very much like all their other animation I'm going to have my variables fx and fy. I'll so do int fx equals comets sub i dot current frame modulus comet sub i dot animation columns times comet sub i dot frame width All right. so there's that and then we're going to do f or x f y is going to equal comets sub i sub i dot current frame by by Comets sub i dot animation columns times comets sub i dot frame height. Awesome. Then we're going to call AL draw bitmap region and I'm going to pass in comets sub i dot image as my image fx fy comets sub i dot frame width. Comet sub i dot frame height right there. And then remember we need to do this offset. So we can't just draw it at the x and the y. So I gotta do comet sub i dot x minus comet sub i dot frame width divided by two and comet sub i dot y minus comet sub i dot frame height divided by 2, and then our final parameter, which will just be 0. Alright, so now, uh, since I know I'm going to need to adjust my bounding box, I'm just going to go ahead and uh, put that code in now. So I'm going to do AL draw filled rectangle. We're going to pass in comet sub i dot, and then what I'm going to do is I'm, I'm going to try to type in that, so I'm just going to copy that. So I'm going to do x minus comet sub i dot bound x and then comet sub i dot y minus comet sub i dot bound y and then comet sub i dot x plus comet sub i dot bound x and comet sub i dot y plus comet sub i dot bound y all right and then my color and i'm just going to do al map rgba that's in 255 0, 255, and 100. Great. And that'll give me my bounding box. So let's go ahead and run this here real quick. We don't have our animation in place yet, uh, but we can see just how these comments look. And you can see here, not animation or anything, and the, uh, obviously the bounding boxes are just completely not big enough. So we'll need to look at that. Okay, great. So let's go to our update section right here. And this is where we are going to add our animation. This isn't going to be anything new, but we do want to modify it only if the comment's live. What I'm going to do is if I still have that copied comment sub i plus 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 comment sub i dot frame count is greater than or equal to comment sub i dot frame delay. That's how we know it's time to update. All right, so if that's true, then I am going to do comments of i dot curve frame plus equals comments of i dot animation direction. All right, and then I'm going to say if comments of i dot curve frame. Oh, I see I have a typo up here. Got to get rid of that extra dot. 
current frame is greater than or equal to balance by dot max frame. Then comments y dot curve frame is going to equal zero. Else if comments y dot curve frame is less than or equal to zero, comments i dot curve frame equals comments i dot max frame minus one. Alright, great. And then finally, comments of i dot frame count equals zero. Awesome. And then the last part of the updating, if the comment is alive, is we are going to say comments of i dot x minus equals comments of i dot speed. Great. All right. So we're going to see our animations now, and then we're going to use we're going to we're going to watch it, and then we're going to use that to determine what our new bounding box sizes should be. So I'm going to run this here. Oh, we got some pretty cool... Wow, I died right away. The bounding box is definitely one big enough. So let's make this, say, 35 and 35. We'll see if that's big enough. So we'll have 75, 70 by 70 bounding box. Remember, our, our images are 96 by 96. Let's also... Let's slow our speed down. And let's speed our animation up. Alright, uh, so by reducing frame delay we actually speed up our animation, but by reducing speed we actually slow it down. So let's see how it runs now. Alright, actually that bounding box looks pretty solid. And we got, uh, can't really see it because we got that purple box over, over top of it. And actually that's slow, that, that speed might be a bit too slow. So yeah, let, let's, let's pump that speed back up. Let me put it back to 5 there. Um, it looks like we have our bounding box pretty set, so I'm going to go ahead and comment out our bounding box code so we can't see it anymore. Great, and one more thing I want to do. It's kind of boring with all the comments looking pretty much exactly the same, so I'm going to do this. I'm actually going to come up here and I'm going to say if brand modulus 2, uh, which is going to equal either 0 or 1, if brand modulus 2, I'm going to do comments.animation direction 1, else comments sub i dot animation direction equals negative one. There we go. Now our comments will animate in two different directions. Give us a little bit of variety. So we got one there. So far they've all been animating. There we go. There's one that's animating in a different direction. And I want you to notice these are uh, flat images. We know they're flat images because uh, we looked at the sprite sheet, but they look very 3D. I don't know how they're going to look on this recording software, but to me they look very 3D. So they're, they're very appealing as far as asteroids go. Um, it's a really neat effect. They, they seem to be changing color and, and uh, fully 3D objects, even though I know they're 2D. So you can actually achieve some pretty neat 3D effects uh, with the use of some, uh, some clever graphics. All right, fantastic. One thing you could do if you were modifying this code um, is you could make the uh, uh, comments render at different sizes using uh, using our, um, uh, our, sh our stretched imaging uh, functions. Of course, now on the spot, I can't think of the name of it. Um, our scaled image, that's what it is. We can do our AL draw scaled uh, bitmap region. Um, and we can use that to make these appear at different sizes if I wanted to add a scale variable to my uh, comment struct. And you could add, you know, just a little bit of spice to it. Of course, if you did that, you'd need to modify the bounding box appropriately. Uh, but, uh, but yeah, it wouldn't be too hard to implement. Okay, so that is comments. And then in the next film, we are going to be adding something completely new to the game, which is going to be explosions. Uh, those are really neat. So uh, stand by.